No, I don't waste no time. How you doing guys and welcome back to a new video and in this video I want to address some of the issues that people are having when running ads um, either for their clients or for their own e-commerce stores and where you know it's basically not working the way they want it to work um, how we can address that and how we can pinpoint what is actually going wrong with your flow because more often than not, it's not just the Facebook ads that are not converting. It might actually be an issue with the entire store. So before we dive into this, I just want to basically get everyone on the same page and look at the funnel that we are obviously trying to run. So obviously on the front end, you have the Facebook ads. Um, and then with the Facebook ads, obviously you're driving traffic to a store. More often than not, this will be Shopify, could be WordPress, could be you know any other store, it doesn't really matter, but you are driving traffic off of Facebook onto a third party platform, which uh, let's just say, for example, say a Shopify store. Then once they arrive on the Shopify store, they click on shop now, or they click on view products or anything like that, and then they view a product page. Once they see an item they like, they will add to cart, and then if they are very much willing to buy it, they will also initiate the checkout. And then at the end of that, of course, we have the thank you page, which basically means that they have made a purchase. Now, you know, without taking into consideration upsells, cross sells, uh, anything like that, let's just keep the flow as is. So we have got the Facebook ad, FBA. There we go, apologies for the writing guys. Then we have, of course, the homepage, we have view content when they view the product page. We have add to cart when they add to cart, of course. Initiate checkouts when they had when they add their payment details, etc. And then of course we have the purchase when they place an order. Okay, so this is the flow that we are currently running for you know our hypothetical Shopify store. So of course we want to get as many people from Facebook onto our Shopify store in this case as possible. And the metric that we use for this is called the outbound click. So I see a lot of people using link clicks, or clicks and so on and so forth, which is okay, you know, it, it is a metric that we can use. But the only issue there is it will take every single click into consideration. So if you have long form copy and it says read more and they click on the read more, that will register as a click. But that does not necessarily mean that they've seen the website. They've just clicked on read more and they're reading the rest of the copy. Maybe your ad has a lot of engagement, a lot of comments, a lot of shares, and someone clicks on read more comments. Again, this will register as a click, but does not necessarily mean that that person has been on the website. So what we use for this is called the outbound click. Why? Because literally the click is going outbound off of Facebook onto another platform, okay? So outbound click, and we also use the metric outbound click through rates to basically work out the percentage of people that see the ads and actually click through to the website. We want that to be at the very least 1%, but I always try and aim for 1.5% for my own e-com clients, because that means that for every 100 people that see our ads, um, we're getting at least one person to click through to the store. Now, of course, these metrics can very easily be manipulated by running a traffic campaign, an impression campaign, and so on and so forth. But what we wanna do is we wanna go for the cream of the crop. We wanna go for conversions. So when we set up a campaign, so prior to all of this, prior to getting people through the flow, we wanna select the conversion objective in Facebook. And by doing that, we are telling Facebook, okay, we want people that are most likely to convert. So when you set up your campaign and you have an ad set where you basically create the audience um, and let's say the audience that we are targeting is everyone in the US, okay? So this, this is our whole pool of people in the US. Everyone that is in the US that is on Facebook or Instagram in this case um, will be in this pool here. Then what we wanna do is we tell Facebook, okay, we are optimizing for conversions and we wanna optimize further for pages. What Facebook will then do is within our entire audience of people that are in the US, 
they'll pick out a small pocket of that audience that is most likely to purchase. That is based off of you know, previous online behavior from those people, um, the data that we already have on our pixel, you know, they'll go out and find more people like that and so on and so forth. So these people that are in this, this little pocket, like I said, these have been proven to buy online. They have either, you know, ran, they clicked on ads before in the past and they've bought, um, you know, they're logged into Facebook while they are, you know, filling out the credit card details and basically buying from other online stores and so on and so forth. But, you know, there are a lot of ways that Facebook knows what kind of person is most likely to purchase. And by selecting the conversion campaign optimized for purchase, Facebook will right away start targeting that specific audience. Whereas if you set up a traffic campaign, it might target a complete different segment of the market. And those people, yes, they are you know, most likely to click through to the website, but those aren't necessarily the people that are most likely to purchase. These are people that like to browse, that like to click, that like to see what's behind the offer and so on and so forth. Um, and you know, like I said, yes, you'll get a very high outbound click through rate, but that is a relatively you know, low quality traffic source. So what we wanna do is we wanna go for the highest quality traffic source possible, even when you're just starting out, even when you don't have a lot of data, even when it's the very first campaign you've run, do not believe all this, we need to season the pixel, not like that. Go for conversions right off the bat and optimize for purchase right off the bat as well. And then with that cream of the crop audience, we need ads that will get you an outbound click-through rate of at least 1.5%. Once you do that, you know that from an ads perspective, from an ads point of view, you are doing you know, a good job. Obviously, the higher the outbound click-through rate with that cream of the crop audience, the better, but at least with a 1.5%, you know, okay, for now, that is, you know, it's doing its thing. It's doing what it needs to do, okay? Then in terms of metrics for, like I said, the, you know, the percentage of people that view the homepage and view content, view content and add to cart, view add to cart and initial share, et cetera, this will differ per niche, per country, per type of product, per price, et cetera. So I can't really give you any benchmarks for that, but if you notice that there is a very high drop off because we can set these columns in Facebook, right? If you go onto the ads manager, click on customize columns, you can actually select all of these metrics and then see for yourself where there is a drop off. So if let's say you notice that um, we are getting 100 clicks onto the, let's say we're getting 100 view contents, okay? So we've got, let's say 120 people view the website, um, we've got 125 outbound clicks, um, out of the 125 outbound clicks, 120 people viewed the website, out of the 120 people that viewed the website, 100 people clicked on the product and um, you know basically viewed the viewed content. Now, if we notice that out of those 100 people, only one person actually added to cart, so you've got 100 view contents, one added to cart in Facebook, um, and of course you know that the tracking is set up correctly, which is a story for another day, for another video, that means that 99% of the people that view your products do not end up adding to cart. Now, why is that? Is that because it, it, more often than not, people will go, oh, you're targeting the wrong interest, or oh, your ad set not set up correctly and stuff like that. But more often than not, that has got to do with the product page. And what we've noticed, if I just move all of this across here, um, what we've noticed that more often than not is that that product page is just not set up correctly. Now, what we like to do for all of our clients when we get that product page or when we view the product page is make sure that, first of all, it's optimized for mobile because 79% of the traffic you know, that is on Shopify will come from a mobile device. So make sure it is optimized for mobile, um, but make sure that it looks something like this. So you've got your product image on the left-hand side. Um, again, you know, this was sort of a different pair theme, but sort of, you know, try and get it to look like this. Title of the product. Okay. Reviews. Let me just change that up here. There we go. Title, reviews, and then add to cart straight away. Okay, no descriptions, not like that. It's, it's unnecessary. People do not read the descriptions. Even if you've got a product that needs some kind of explanation, then you need to have you know some kind of video, either a video ad or a video here that explains you know, what the product is and what it does. Almost nobody reads that description, okay? If you want a description, then have it at the bottom, okay? So have it below the add to cart. The add to cart button needs to be above the fold at all times. For those that do not know what that means, 
it means that the add to cart button needs to be viewable without scrolling okay so as soon as the page loads on desktop as well as on mobile which i'll get into in just a second the add to cart button needs to be visible if people need to scroll in order to see the add to cart that means that the, that that page the product page is not optimized and you will lose a lot of traffic why because people are very very lazy okay even if you are targeting the cream of the crop even if you are optimizing for pages if people need to scroll, you will lose their attention and they will go on to the next page or they'll click away. Okay, so products on the left, title, reviews, the more, the better. And with reviews, I just mean the stars. So, um, you know, it'll have like five stars and then it'll say like 34 reviews or something like that. And then you'll have the, the add to cart button. You'll have the description if necessary. And then below the fold, you can have all your reviews, etc. here, and then maybe frequently bought together, something like that. Okay. Then for mobile, same thing again. We want, so, um, well, I'll just create it here. So for mobile, we want title, product image, add to cart button. Okay. And then we want the fold, of course, and then you have your reviews and so on and so forth. Okay. If this is not possible, if the images are too big, if you know, you've know you got a big announcement bar here because you're running some kind of a discount and it's just not feasible for you to have the images smaller, then I want you to set up a sticky add to cart. Okay, there's free plugins on Shopify that do this. Um, there's paid plugins that you know work slightly better and so on and so forth. It doesn't really matter which one you do. Just make sure that you have a sticky add to cart, which means that if someone's on the product page, regardless of where they're at, if they're below the fold, above the fold, if they're scrolled all the way down, the add to cart button is always at the bottom. Okay, there's been research you know done with this, and you know, there's been heat maps, etc. Um, the bottom of your mobile is where people click most. You know, Instagram manipulate this all the time. Every single time there's a feature on Instagram that they want to push, you know, to the to the masses, they will have that button or that feature in the middle on the bottom. So for example, now at the time of recording this, Instagram is really pushing reels. So um, the TikTok type basically videos on Instagram. So what do they do? They place that button for the reels in the middle at the bottom. Okay, so it's very, very easily clickable. And we basically want to replicate that, but then obviously, you know, for Shopify, for our client store or for our own store, we want the add to cart button at the bottom, you know, in a sticky manner. So even if you scroll all the way down, it's still there at the bottom, okay? So that is for mobile. This is for desktop. I'll just quickly erase this now, just so it's nice and clean for when we continue with the rest of the video. Okay, so if your view contents are high, but your add to carts are low, then look at this. Another very important thing that you guys need to also consider is the price of the product, okay? So if you're getting 100 view contents and only one person add to cart, and you've set all the things up that I've just mentioned that you need to set up, also look at the price of the product, okay? It could be that the product is not in season. You know, if you have, um, I don't know, like winter clothing or winter sports gear or anything like that, and you were targeting hot countries where it's, you know, it's summer at the time of, you know, publishing those ads, then obviously, you know, people are not gonna spend a lot of money to buy those winter clothing. Or maybe just in general, the price of the product is too expensive. If you are targeting lesser affluent countries with a product that is priced for tier one countries so let's say you're charging a hundred dollars for a pair of swim shorts and you're targeting mexico and, and, and stuff like that then of course that is going to be a relatively expensive product for them and they might not buy it so if you have a price on the view content page you know the, the product page which i recommend you do anyway and it's too high then of course nobody's going to add to cart because they know they can't afford it anyway Okay, now if you notice that you are getting add to carts, so let's say we've got 90 add to carts out of the 100 because we've optimized everything uh, in the way that I just mentioned you should, but we're only getting one initiate checkout, then we know that it's hard for people that have added to carts to actually check out. Why is that? Where is the checkout button? Have you got a slide cart draw where you know um, the, the checkout page comes in from the right or from the left, you know, whatever you want, um, and then there's a big checkout button uh, below that or maybe um, I don't know let's say you haven't got all that and you know it's very hard to find the checkout button they need to go all the way to the cart themselves 
and click on the course and then the car will open up and then there's a button that says check out obviously that's going to be you know 10 jobs for people to find right like you need to make this as easy as possible for them uh, because if it's not easy like i said people's attention span is decreasing by the day you know with all of this uh, fast-paced content out there you know people's whole online behavior is changing it needs to be fast it needs to be snappy if not you will lose their attention okay so if the add to cart button is hard to find so or if you, you if you're getting metrics like this then look at your checkout page look at your checkout button i should say not the add to cart button the checkout button make sure it's easy to find easily to locate and also easily to click through now People also have that, that like the instant or the fast fast checkout or anything like that. You know, it depends on what app you use, where people that add to cart will automatically go to the checkout page. That is okay, but just know or know that that will um, basically make your average order value decrease because that means that they'll only ever always buy one pick, uh, one one item because they click on one item and they immediately sent to the checkout page they don't have the option to click on multiple items or add other things to cart. So what I would recommend is the slide cart draw feature. Some themes already have it. You've also got a slide cart draw app on Shopify. Um, there's paid versions, there's free versions. You know, again, it's, it's completely up to you which one you want to use. But the slide cart draw basically will um, have this thing come in from the right or the left, depends on you know how you set it up, where if you add an item to cart, the whole cart will come in from the right and then you'll have the option to check out. You'll also have the option to add other items, so frequently bought together items. And you can also set up features like um, spend another $20 for free shipping. And you can also manipulate the average order value by doing that. So let's say you have a average order value of $60 and you really wanna increase the average order value, then what you can say is, okay, spend an extra $40 or have a uh, free shipping from $100 onwards to entice people to spend more on the site, okay? Because if your average order value is higher, but your cost of purchase stays the same, your return on ad spend from, you know, from a Facebook ads point of view is obviously going to be higher, which means that your client's going to be happier or if it's your own store, that you'll make more money, okay? Then let's say you've set all this up, you know, you've got your slide card draw, your checkout page is easily viewable, etc. So we've got an 80 initiate checkouts, but only one purchase. Then you need to check out your, literally your checkout page and make sure that that is set up correctly as well. Now there's two things that always F up the, the purchase and those are shipping times and shipping costs, okay? Now studies have shown that people are more likely to buy an item that is more expensive with free shipping than that same item that is cheaper, but they have to pay for additional shipping. So to put those into numbers, people would rather spend 100 with free shipping than spend 90 with $10 shipping, okay? Even though it's the same thing, people would rather go for this one because it feels like they are getting a deal. And we can play into this as marketers, as media buyers, as store owners, okay? So it might be worth you working out on average how much it costs for you to ship an item. So let's say you ship worldwide, you know, some sales happen in the US where you pay $20 shipping, some sales happen in Europe where you pay $5 shipping. Work out the average of that, add that to the price of the product and offer free shipping. And you'll notice that the drop off from initiate checkout to purchase will be much smaller because of this. And then lastly, People, like I said, we are living in a fast-paced society now. It needs to be quick, it needs to be snappy, it needs to be to the point. Same goes for shipping as well. We cannot get away with 30 day shipping anymore. It needs to be quick, okay? Amazon have same day shipping or next day shipping along with a lot of the larger brands where they all have shipping set up in such a way that you'll get it as soon as possible. So looking at the long-term you know, plan for your brand or the longevity of the brand, it might be worth spending a bit more, uh, spending a bit more, spending a little bit um, extra to get you know the shipping time down. So if it costs you an extra five dollars, but the shipping time the decreases from sixty days to five days, it will be worth it for, like I said, the longevity of your brand. Yes, it might cut into your margins in the short term, but if people are happy with their experience with your brand, experience with your store 
they will come back for more. And you might notice that you'll get repeat purchases from these customers because they know, okay, it only takes me five days to actually receive this item, okay? So for the initiate checkout to purchase ratio, make sure that your shipping is as cheap as can possibly be. It might even be worth increasing the prices on the products to offer free shipping and make sure that your shipping times are as short as they can be as well. If your shipping time is longer than 10 days, personally, I would not have it on the website. I would just have shipping includes track and trace. Do not mention it costs, it takes 10 or 20 days because you will lose purchases because of it, okay? So that is all I've got for today's video. Hope you found this useful. If you wanna know more about how you can get better results for your clients as a ads agency, a media buyer, anything like that, then check out the link in the description box down below where I offer basically a free strategy call to see if you are a right fit for one of our coaching programs. If you are a store owner and you'd like my help with this, uh, you can also schedule a free strategy call with our agency to see if we can actually come in and help you get more sales and better results with Facebook ads. But this is it for now. Any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.